Let's put some reflections in sunglasses. Hello, creative people of the world. This is Nick Sanders, and you are checking out Video Deconstructed. This tutorial will show you how to replace what you see in a pair of sunglasses. It will be a joyous occasion. We have our clip on the bottom, video track one, of our poker player with the sunglasses. And then on video track two, we have our opponent who has the chips in his hands and we're going to put this clip into a nest. So there he is inside the nest. We go back to our main sequence and what we want to do is put a mask on the reflection nest and we want to have that follow this guy's sunglasses. Click on the mask path to put a keyframe at the very first frame of our clip. And the amount that you move forward is going to depend on what you're tracking. The faster it's moving, the more keyframes you'll need. Once you have your mask following the frames of the sunglasses, now we can animate what we're going to see inside there. Right now we start off seeing a little bit of the chips and then we're just looking at nothing pretty much. So remember, you do not want to animate the position and scale of the nest while you're in your main sequence. We're going to go to our reflection nest and we're going to select the clip that we're seeing inside of the frames and we'll animate here in this position and scale. In order to see where the frames are, we're going to paste a reference clip right here of our guy with the sunglasses. So I go back to our main sequence, select our clip of the guy with the sunglasses, copy that, and then right here on track two, I'll make sure I'm at the first frame, paste, and now I can see the motion of where his frames are. I'm just going to turn down, we'll call this our reference clip, so I can see where the frames are. Now I can select our poker chips and see where they're going to fall. And uh, let's say I want to shrink that down to about that size. And I can just select motion. Remember, you don't want to show the edge of your clip in the frame. So we have to be over far enough that we're going to be clear of the edge of his frames. I'm going to place a keyframe for position. That's the keyframe for this bottom clip. Then I'm going to go to near the end and select motion, move these chips back up here, and then I'll just drag through and kind of see if they're staying in the frame. And that looks pretty good. I'll turn off my reference clip, go back to the main sequence, and now we're getting a lot closer to what we want. And if you turn down the reflection nest a little bit, turn down the opacity maybe about 30% or so. Also, you might want to change your blend mode, possibly put it on screen. So another advantage of setting up a nest like this is if we change our mind and don't want to show the poker chips, but instead we want to show the man's face, we can leave this nest. All of our work here is safe. We don't have to change anything. We can go to this reflection nest and I'll just move this clip out of the way in case I want to add it back in later. And I'm going to mark this clip in and out and we'll go to our clip of our opponent and let's say we want to show his face so i can mark an end point and add that clip down here to the bottom track and now all i have to do is repeat the same process we want to put another copy of the opponent in the other lens so i'm going to move this clip of my actor with the sunglasses up a video track and then option click and drag on a Mac or alt click and drag on a PC, drag a copy of this opponent clip up to video track two. So now I have two identical clips 
And then this clip is just my reference so I can see where the sunglasses are. So this second clip, this is the one that I'm gonna put into the other lens. So to be able to see this new copy, I need to create a mask for this other lens. So again, I'm gonna turn my scaling up and we'll put this second lens right in the middle. I'm selecting the reflection nest and if you go over here, you can see there's mask one. I'm gonna get my pen tool again. Now, if, if this happens to you and you don't want to have that in your way, what you can do is go back to your reflection nest and turn off that clip because you don't need to see it. So because I flipped over to this other sequence, I've lost my pen tool. I click on it again, I get a third mask. Easiest thing to do, just delete that, delete that, start over again. Remember our first mask is fine. So I'm gonna get the pen tool. Now I've got this mask ready to be drawn. I don't have that other video getting in my way. I'm gonna select the clip. Now, this one already has some position automation on it from the original lens. So what you wanna do to move your second reflection over is to not touch the position keyframe. You wanna move the anchor point. Now I can slide this second reflection around, but notice as I play forward, they are both moving in tandem. So it's keeping the original keyframing of the original reflection. Now I'm going to turn my reference video back on because I need to move my anchor point so that my new reflection is in the other lens and doesn't show any of the edge of the video like it was before in the original. Then I'm going to add my third mask and this one is going to keep this opponent video copy from overlapping on our original opponent clip. And if it crosses over like that, then you just need to animate it a little bit. So I put a keyframe. And then we'll just move that mask over and keep it safe. Because most sunglasses are curved, you might want to add a warp to the image. So you could try lens distortion. Drag and drop this onto your clip on Video Track 2. Turn up the curvature and play with the other controls to get the distortion you like. You're going to see your video curve, but then you get this white border. You might need to play with the scale and the anchor point of your clip if you start to see the border. I would leave it on while you are getting the look you want, and then you can click here on the fill color and switch it to black just to be safe. But if you leave it to white, it'll make it easier to see that you've hidden that. Remember, you keyframed your position, so I wouldn't go messing with that as you might end up creating a problem you don't want. Once you get one lens the way you like it, you can select the clip, copy, and then paste attributes onto the other clip. Thanks for hanging out to the end of this episode of Video Deconstructed. I'm Nick Sanders, and if you could hit the subscribe button, I will reflect more videos upon you. Click and be happy.